I'm back here in the Ocala National Forest in the Juniper Prairie Wilderness. We'll be going out for an overnight trip, so I hope you follow along. Getting on the Florida Trail. Should be interesting. So I'm a little over a mile out and uh, I'm ready to enter the wilderness area. Got a uh, road here for emergency vehicles, uh, especially uh, vehicles that firefighters need to use to get in to this area to control fires. It also acts as a uh, kind of fire break. So it prevents the fire from jumping from one side to the other. This road kind of, or this fire break here, kind of prevents it. So again, access road. And now I'm going to continue on here in the uh, wilderness area there. And as you can see, got some clouds up above. But the sun is out and it's probably in the uh, mid to upper 70s now. And it is going to be definitely warmer than it has been in the previous few days. So when you're in Ocala and you're going to set up base camp, be careful of trees or these pines here that are burnt because eventually they will fall. So when you place your base camp, make sure that you place it away from trees that are burnt, pines like this, because it's just a matter of time where this one here will come down. Use the acronym that I came up with, WESS, W-E-S-S. -S. Place your base camp uh, near or around water. We have access to water. E, make sure you place your base camp where you have some elevation. S, security, make sure you have ingress, egress. If something happens in an emergency, you have to exit your base camp. And the last S is safety. Safety entails watching out for trees that are going to fall uh, on you or on your tent while you're in it. One of the reasons I enjoy coming out here to the Juniper Prairie Wilderness is because when you get into the heart of this wilderness area, you have a lot of open ground and it's a great area to set up a base camp. Now, if you're going to be out here setting up a base camp, be careful on not setting it too close to uh, the water or water source. For example, you see some water back there. It's kind of like a pond uh, because there are alligators out here and they will come into your base camp. So make sure you're far enough away from the water source and also be careful of the insects. Uh, i.e. ticks, etc. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I like using a tent when I come out here to the Juniper Prairie Wilderness or anywhere in the Ocala National Forest. Taking a little break and having a little snack. It's a Quest protein cookie. 15 grams of protein, 2 grams of sugar, 9 grams of fiber. Can't beat that. So I found an area for my base camp. It's off the uh, Florida Trail, far enough in where no one's going to see me or hear me uh, or, or see a fire, I should say. But they might see the smoke, depending on how or what I put on it. So I'm going to set my camp up. And uh, over there, I'm going to set my tent up. And then uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and dig out a fire pit for tonight put the tripwire alarm system up and I got two game cameras I'm going to go ahead and set up tonight and we'll see if they get any pictures or any video because they're also uh, have video on these cameras uh, tonight because normally early in the morning is when I have some things kind of moving around this particular area here so kind of in the heart of the Juniper Prairie Wilderness uh, beautiful day today well, I should say it's cloudy day today but uh, they're not expecting rain till tomorrow night. So let me get my base camp set up and then I'll uh, continue on with some other videos. So here's my base camp. I have the uh, fire pit dug out there. Set up the tent in the back there with all my gear. I still got to put out the uh, tripwire alarm system and I have two um, game cameras here. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and set up tonight to see if anything breaches the uh, perimeter of my base camp. Uh, about 50% of the time that I'm out here, usually early in the morning, something comes into my base camp, trips my uh, alarm system. So I'm going to go ahead and set these out. And I have my bear vault. I have my food stored in. This is a good way to bring food out here in Ocala. I went ahead and put some reflective tape on it so it's easy to find in the evening if you shine a light on it. Now you can hang your food in the trees, but again, these trees are kind of difficult sometimes to properly hang food in. So this is probably your better choice. The problem with this is it takes some a lot of bulk or space in your backpack. So that's kind of the downside, but it's very convenient and nice. So what I did here is I dug out a fire pit. When I'm in Ocala, I like digging out my fire pits. Provides some protection uh, from the flames from jumping out into some drier grass here. I created a little berm here. And that way when I'm done with the fire, I'm able to bury it back in, extinguish the fire completely, and then it'll overgrow back and it'll look like there was no fire here whatsoever. Now when I come out here, I use uh, an e-tool. This is an SOG e-tool. It's a shovel, and I got it configured now as a pick, and it's easy to, uh, again, dig out an area. And it's very uh, sandy here, kind of a white sand. So when it rains, uh, the rain permeates quickly through the sand into the uh, aquifer. So it's not too difficult to uh, dig out here in Ocala. I got a few minutes, and I want to talk to you about some comments that I've been getting on my safety in Ocala videos. I have two videos out on that here on my YouTube channel. Now, one of the comments that I recently received, uh, the individual stated that they didn't know that Ocala was such a death trap. And I want to clear up my intent on why I did those videos. Any wilderness area that you go into has its inherent risks from animals, from the environment, and from people. Ocala over the years has had some real bad, or I should say they have had a bad rap because a lot of what goes on here has been really publicized. And it doesn't necessarily happen in the wilderness area as much as around it. So if you do your research, you'll see a lot of that. Now, I'm not saying that nothing has happened here in the wilderness area. I'm just saying that a lot of the issues in Ocala are kind of on, on the surrounding uh, perimeter of the uh, forest itself. But now the video's intent, or those two videos that I did, was to give you some safety tips on making your stay uh, safer while you're out here. I think a lot of reasons why Ocala gets a lot of uh, public or publicity is because we live in a very uh, tempered climate here in Florida. So you can pretty much backpack year round, whereas in some of the areas up north, a lot of individuals pretty much put it on the back burner until spring and summer. Ocala has a lot of access points, and it's relatively flat. So those in itself, I think, make it an area that is frequented a lot, especially by the locals. So when you come to Ocala, it's a beautiful ecosystem. There's a lot to see out here. There's a lot to experience out here. It's definitely a beautiful wilderness area. It's here in my backyard and I've been out here many times. If you follow those safety tips that I talked to you about in those two videos, it should make your stay safer. The important thing is when you're out here is to get off the trail system. So Florida trail is what I used to get out here and I made sure that I was far enough off the trail system. So if individuals are coming by, they're not gonna see me. It's not nothing wrong to say hello to individuals, maybe talk to them. But be careful with those individuals that want to befriend you too quickly and kind of set up their camps next to yours because sometimes they might have some nefarious intentions. And I'm not saying that goes on here in Ocala, but that can go on in any wilderness area. Recently, there was um, some criminal activity on the Appalachian Trail where some individuals were killed. So it doesn't happen here in Ocala. It happens in, happens in other wilderness areas. So just be aware. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely post them here on the video, and I'll get back to you. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, it's about uh, 15, 20 hours, 
and you can see the skies are kind of turning dark. Maybe some rain's coming in, but I'm ready for it. I have my base camp set up, and I might do a little perimeter sweep here and check out the area and see what's going on before I light my fire tonight. So I'm setting up my tripwire alarm system around the perimeter of my base camp. It's about uh, 16, 20 hours, so it should be night probably in about uh, two and a half hours. So I'm going to get this all set up, and then I'm going to set up my game cameras. And I got two of them, so i got to figure out how I want to position them here around my base camp. All right, so I have my uh, tripwire alarm system here. Attach that tree, and then I have the uh, wire going out down to those trees over there. And I got four of them set out. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up my game cameras. I'm probably going to pick a couple of these trees over here. I only have two of them, so I'm going to have to place them as best as I can. All right, it's about 17, 15 hours, 5, 15 p.m. And uh, just finished setting up the tripwire alarm system around base camp. And I also have the uh, game camera. I have two of them set up. And I have one here and I have one on the other side of the base camp there. So we'll see if they pick up any motion. And they're set for video and pictures. So hopefully we'll get something in the morning if something comes around here, even if it doesn't trip uh, the alarm system. Now it's a full moon tonight and the skies have cleared up as you can see. I was going to rain earlier, so I should get some good night pics. I'm going to try to get some night videos uh, tonight. But overall, it looks like it's going to be a nice evening. It's getting a little cool. Didn't reach into the 80s today like it was supposed to, but it was in the upper 70s, but it was warm. Uh, considering the past several days that we've had here. So we'll see how the full moon goes tonight, and we'll see how these cameras work tonight as well. So I want to talk about uh, the gear that I carry out to wilderness area. Now, not too long ago, I did a couple of videos on a go bag. And what my go bag is, it's a bag that I carry inside my backpack if I need to bug out of a situation, for example, uh, I'm at a base camp and something happens where I need to get out of it quickly, I can grab a go bag and I can hit the trail uh, till I get to safety. And what's in my go bag are my items that are essential for survival, you know, fire starting kit, etc. And uh, this particular go bag that I have here today, I did a little modification on. So in that video, I used a Red Rock sling backpack. And I like a sling backpack because it's quick and easy to put on and you can do different things with it. Uh, but what I did is I went ahead and I got a different uh, carrier for it. And this right here is an earth pack. It's a 10 liter pack. They come in different sizes. 10 liters works very well. And I got a rifle sling and I attached it um, to carabiners that I attached to this earth pack here. So... What this pack is, is it's a waterproof bag that keeps your items dry. It's a very durable material. It's rubberized, uh, and it uh, so far has worked very well. So I have this in my backpack, and if I need to get out of a situation or ditch my backpack or get out of my base camp, I can grab this, and again, it has my essential gear. Now with that sling, what I do is I put it on like a sling backpack, and I'm able to move out smartly. So in essence, I'm still using the same concept, the sling backpack, except I'm not using the Red Rock, I'm using this Earth Pack. Now there's different types of uh, packs like this on Amazon, this is an Earth Pack. I like this because again, it's very uh, tough rubberized material. And what's nice about this particular pack here as well is, is that this can also hold water. So in a survival situation, I can put water in this and uh, drink from it or basically bring it with me to have water. So it kind of serves a dual purpose. So that's why I kind of went to this 
in reference to uh, getting rid of my red rock and uh, utilizing this as my go bag. So it's something to think about. I'm gonna do some videos or a video on this later on and talk to you about the items that I put into it. Essentially, it's the same items that I put in uh, to my videos on my Red Rock uh, backpack. But I will do a video when I get back and talk more about that. But I just want to kind of give you an update on the gear and uh, what I'm bringing out here today in Ocala. So I have a treat for everyone later on. And uh, last night, I was thinking about food that I can bring here into the Ocala National Forest and have for dinner. And there's something that came to mind that I haven't had in many years. I think last time I had it, I was a child. And that is Jiffy Pop. Now, Jiffy Pop, for those that don't know it, is popcorn. You put this on a stove, and there's kernels inside here, and they expand in aluminum foil, and you have hot popcorn. It's been around since the late 1950s, and I used to love this as a child. Now, this Jiffy Pop here is butter flavored. So later on, I'm going to go ahead and try to cook this on my fire. And I'm going to see if I can have some hot butter popcorn here in the Ocala National Forest. Now, I'm sure it's been done in other wilderness areas, but it might be a first here in Ocala. So stand by. Sun is setting in the west. And it's gotten very quiet here in Ocala. This is when that Ocala mystique moves in. I'm not expecting any fog tonight, but maybe in the early morning hours, depending on how the temperatures are. It's getting a little cooler, but uh, we're gonna have a full moon tonight. So that should be interesting. I always love being out here on a full moon in Ocala. It's 18, 15 hours, and the uh, sun has set. And uh, actually, looks like there's a little fog moving in. You know, that plus the moon should make for an eventful night. It's 19, 10 hours, and I'm about to make some dinner. I'm going to be having some lasagna with meat sauce. I'm going to be boiling up some water here. That boiled pretty quick. All right, I'm ready to cook my buttered flavored Jiffy Pop. So I got the Jiffy Pop on the fire and I got it to the side there, away from the uh, flame. I can say it's smoking. There it goes. And there we go. Let me go ahead and cut it open and have some popcorn. Jiffy Pop. Not bad. Had the fire going, had some chow, and uh, moon is out. If you can get the backdrop there, full moon. It's quiet uh, here in Ocala. Temperature is probably in the mid 60s. It's not that cold, but uh, I'm sure it's going to get a little cooler as the night goes on.
All right, it's about 22, 15 hours, and uh, I've already eaten, fire's out, and I'm ready to uh, hit the sack. It's been a great evening, and uh, the temperatures right now are probably in the lower 60s. Uh, about a week ago, less than a week ago, got down into the 30s over here, so it was freezing. So if you come out to Ocala, especially in the uh, winter months, make sure you're prepared because it will get cold out here. won't snow, but it'll get cold. I've been hearing some noises around my base camp. I have the tripwire alarm system out, and I have the two game cameras, so I'll check those tomorrow to see if they've been activated. And uh, I probably won't know what it was if they were activated until I get back home, so I'm going to have to add them on at the end of this video. Overall, I enjoy coming out here to Ocala. Something about being out here, especially in the evening, that I enjoy. And I really enjoy coming out to the Juniper Prairie Wilderness. Um, beautiful area up here. And there's some uh, great areas we could set up a base camp off the Florida Trail. So I will see you tomorrow morning. And then uh, once I get up, check the cameras, have some chow. And then I'm going to get on the trail, back to the trailhead. Because I have to be home. Because I have to work tomorrow night. I got an off-duty gig that I need to work. So. See you in the morning. Almost zero seven hundred hours. And the, uh, there's some fog in the area. You can see in the backdrop. And sun is rising slowly in the east. I'm slowly breaking down my camp. I'm gonna have some chow here. Biscuits and gravy mountain house. It's pretty good. I've had it before and then uh, Get ready to hit the trail back to the trailhead So I've retrieved my game cameras here and there is video and pictures on them, so I won't be able to Take a look at them till I get home. So what I'll do is at the end of this video I'll add a segment on what is on the cameras, if anything. So I'll let you know. A little after zero eight hundred hours, and I'm finishing up packing my stuff up here, and I should be moving out in about fifteen minutes. All packed up and ready to head back to the trailhead. And by the way, for those wondering, I didn't share any popcorn last night with Bigfoot. I'm leaving my base camp and bushwhacking back to the Florida Trail. This is why you wear long pants and long sleeve shirts when you're in Ocala, especially if you want to get off the trail. Because you have to go through some thick vegetation. And here we have it. Florida Trail. We're going to be heading this way. Yeah, those clouds are back up in the sky again. I'm sure it's going to rain later on. Now, that was interesting. Saw a couple of deer break. I happened to have my camera running at the time. There it goes. All right. Move on out smartly. Well, another overnight adventure coming to an end. Trailheads in front of me there. Had a great time. And uh, I always enjoy coming out here to the Ocala National Forest, specifically here in the Juniper Prairie Wilderness. Now stay tuned because I'm going to add on to this video 
when I get home, I need to look at the uh, video footage uh, and photos that my game cameras took. And I'm going to go ahead and add a segment onto this video talking to you about that. Well, I'm back home and I did check my cameras and there was nothing on the SD cards that was unusual or suspicious. Matter of fact, one of the cameras, the batteries went dead. And what's unusual about that is that they both had fully charged uh, brand new batteries in them. Now, I did check that camera out. I put some other batteries in it and it's functioning correctly. So it's kind of unusual that the batteries uh, went dead in that particular camera. Uh, there was activity around my camp that evening and uh, maybe I didn't have the cameras situated in the uh, correct spot. I'm going to try to maybe get another one uh, on my next trip. I'm looking forward to getting back out there again. I enjoy heading out to Ocala. It's a beautiful wilderness area, definitely a different ecosystem. And uh, hopefully I get back out there again in the next month or two because the temperatures here in Florida are really nice. And in the summertime, it gets very hot and humid out there. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Please follow along on future videos that I'm going to post here on my YouTube channel on wilderness backpacking and survival. This is Andy. Thank you for watching. And while I'm out here doing this video, Josh is enjoying himself on the grass. He loves rolling around.